Welcome to chapter 17. This is about all galaxies. And we're, we're you know, we're going to approach this the way we've approached stars and everything else, um, planets. We, we, we compare what we know the best. Of course, the, the thing that we know the best was what the subject of chapter 16, the Milky Way galaxy. Now we're going to find that all galaxies are certainly not spiral galaxies, um, out there in the universe. Uh, there, there's many galaxies that are quite different. Um, but let's, let's explore that. All right. So, um, there, there literally are billions upon billions of galaxies in some estimates, you know, um, hundreds of billions of galaxies. Uh, there's, you know, there's just too many to count. Um, that, that's based on statistical analysis of, you know, um, really deep field objects. Uh, anyhow, um, so, so like, like, like I said, uh, just a moment ago, uh, some galaxies are spiral galaxies. Others are, have a more, um, egg shaped, um, look, the, those are called elliptical galaxies. We'll get into that in just a little bit. And then others don't have any overall shape at all. And, and in fact, they have what's called an irregular appearance. And so they're, um, called <laughs> irregular galaxies. <laughs> Not a very inventive name, but that's that's what that's that's what they're. Um, so that's that's actually the three general types of galaxies, if you will. I mean, there's other categories of galaxies, but uh, just in appearance alone, spiral, elliptical, and uh, irregular galaxies. And we'll we'll break that down further. Um, in, in fact, this next line breaks it down uh, further. There are some galaxies that are producing more energy than like your average galaxy let's say like like the milky way the milky way is an average galaxy um the the uh, andromeda galaxy which i'll talk about a lot are the our our nearest spiral galaxy neighbor um which which is two and a half million light years away um that, that's also just a regular galaxies a regular galaxy, but there are some galaxies that are producing incredible amounts of radiation, um, generally in their, in, at their centers. And we'll, we'll talk about why that is. Um, those are, those are termed, um, active galaxies. So, so, so there's an ad, another category, categorization of galaxies. So you can break it into, you know, just, just average galaxies and active galaxies. All right. But, but you wouldn't like, you wouldn't know a galaxy is an active galaxy by just, um, you know, just looking at its shape or something like that. It's, it has to do with the amount of energy that is coming from, from, uh, from the galaxy. And that, and so that this is a very recent, um, you know, the last hundred years or so of, of astronomical observations have been able to tell us, um, more, more things about these active galaxies. All right. Um, galaxies also tend to uh, cluster, and they, 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 these clusters um, uh, form, form uh, you know, w what are called superclusters uh, as well. Uh, well. We'll talk more about that. Um, they, they are they are uh, moving around. The, the, the galaxies are moving out around within the clusters due to gravitation, and of course, um, the entire universe is expanding. We'll get to the, why that why that's true, uh, in just a moment, uh, or in several slides into this, we'll, we'll find out why that this great discovery that Edwin Hubble made a long time ago, about a hundred years ago. Anyhow, we'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, all right. So, uh, and, and we don't really know, uh, exactly why, you know, there are spiral galaxies and irregular galaxies and elliptical galaxies. Um, and, and uh, although we, we do, we think we know why, why some galaxies are active galaxies and why, um, some, you know, other galaxies are just, the, the vast majority of galaxies are just average, um, the amount of, uh, energy output. Um, so, so there, there are some unanswered questions, but, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, that's certainly an active field. All right. Um, so this is, this is a, just a, this is, um, a picture of a uh, spiral galaxy. Obviously, that's not the Milky Way. We we could never get far enough away, away from the Milky Way to get this kind of a picture. But you can see the the arms of this spiral are very tightly wrapped. Um, 
and you know there, there are literally a hundred a, you know hundreds of billions of stars making up this galaxy right here, that, you know that we're looking at right here um, and and that they're spaced apart um, you know like, like like I said the, the like for example you know in our part of the universe um, the nearest large galaxy is is two and a half million light years away now you know think about that like if this if this galaxy was the Milky Way, um, the diameter is about a hundred thousand light years, right? So, you know, so ten of those would be, of course, um, you know, a, a million light years, and then ten more would be, you know, so, so 20, you know, 25 of these diameters would be the next spiral galaxy over, okay? Um, now there are some, as, as you're going to see, uh, there there are some galaxies that actually orbit other galaxies, um, and we, you know, in, in our Milky Way, we actually have, oh, well, not in the Milky Way, but part of the the, the Milky Way system, um, there are actually two satellite galaxies that are the tiny little elliptical galaxies. I'm sorry, not elliptical, uh, uh, irregular galaxies. We'll we'll see that in just a minute. All right, and there it is. Uh, this is Andromeda. Um, this so there's several really important things about this particular thing. Um, uh, by the way, the, the, this uh, picture up, or this this image up here, um, you know, to in, to the uh, the upper right here. This is actually another galaxy. Um, this this uh, bright object in the foreground is actually a star within our galaxy that just happens to line up um, with with uh, with Andromeda. Um, so, so that's actually not part of our galaxy. I, I'm sorry, that's not part of Andromeda at all. So, this is Andromeda. It's a spiral galaxy. We see, we see it, you know, kind of tilted like this. Um, and as I said before, it's two and a half million light years away. Um, and uh, the other thing about this is, you can actually see this galaxy with the naked eye. That is, no binoculars. Um, now it doesn't look like this, of course. It's just kind of a fuzzy dot uh, in the night sky. But uh, it's it's actually fairly easy to see. It's near the constellation uh, uh, Perseus and uh, and Pegasus. Um, well, it's it's actually more more closer to Pegasus. Um, anyhow, uh, it ha it has there's several names for the for the Andromeda galaxy. It just it ha the, the the reason we call it Andromeda galaxy is it's in the direction of the constellation Andromeda, um, which is a, actually a kind of a tiny little um, constellation. Uh, anyhow, uh, a long time ago, th there was a guy that was looking for for um, for comets. His name was Charles Messier, Messier, and um, sorry, Messier, and he um, he, he cataloged uh, about a, a little more than a hundred of these objects, and um, Andromeda got the the, the designation M31, and it's still called that today. So um, th th these two uh, galaxies um, are, are actually small little irregular galaxies that are in orbit around the Milky Way. So the, these are the, 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 the large and small clouds of Magellan, as they're called. The, um, you can only see these in the southern hemisphere. Um, back in the 19th century, uh, William Herschel uh, who was a famous English astronomer, the guy who discovered the planet Uranus, uh, came up with this thing called the, the called the New General Catalog, or the in, in a lot of times when you see um, you know a particular astronomical object, it'll have an NGC number, right? I mean, th this thing, like for example, you know, going back to to Andromeda here, the, like you know, Charles Messier did Messier uh, did not know that he was, you know, creating this catalog of galaxies. I mean, it, the, the M numbers aren't just galaxies, right? There, are, you know, there, there's, there's, uh, you know, M1, for example, is, is, is the supernova remnant, uh, in the constellation Taurus. Um, so, so he, you know, he, you know, he, he had no idea what these things were when, when he first cataloged these things. And so he just came up with, you know, the, the these hundred um, objects. Um, this is a more um, uh, 
more rigorous naming system, this NGC number. And, and, and even nowadays, there's, you know, we've gone beyond the NGC catalog to, um, there's like an international cat on IC international catalog numbers as well. Um, that, that, that's, that's not really that important. Uh, you know, it's, it's really what, 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 what are these galaxies? Um, I mean, what, what can we know about, what do we know about them? All right. Um, so Hubble, as I mentioned before, Edwin Hubble in the 1920s, uh, was working at Mount Wilson Observatory, which is in California. Um, it used to be the, 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 most powerful telescope in the world. Um, it's actually no, almost not even used uh, today because of the incredible light pollution due to Los Angeles. You know, it's it's just above Los Angeles, um, and and so the light pollution pretty much makes it makes that telescope useless. Um, and that nowadays actually there there are much better telescopes that we have new equipment um, that new technologies that make make telescopes uh, much much more powerful than than that but then back in the 1920s Hubble uh, found himself in at Mount Wilson he was you know he was uh, a an astronomer and um, he uh, came up with um, three three different types so so that, that those are the three types that I mentioned before spiral galaxies and he labeled them s and he he further labeled them, um, in, in the subcategory of from A to D, where A was um, the most tightly wound and D was the, the most loosely uh, wound. Uh, hey, but so the, um, and then, uh, then there's elliptical. We'll, we'll see pictures of those in just a second. It, it's a little bit objective. It, 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 there's no, like, you know, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, he came up with elliptical galaxies. Um, he, he, he called them, uh, you know, uh, E, E zero through E seven, um, where, where E zero was, was a very, was very spherical. Um, E, E sevens were more, you know, egg shaped. And, uh, okay. So, so, so this is the, this, uh, classification scheme that he came up with. And so you can see S a spiral galaxy, um, a, very tightly wound, looser wound would be SB, SC, and then, of course, the, the loosest bound. In other words, the, the spiral arms are very loosely bound, wrapped around the, the nucleus. Um, that would be an SD. So again, it's, it's somewhat, um, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder, if you will. Um, SOs are very spherical, elliptical galaxies. Um, and then you get to S, S, uh, I'm sorry, e, um, e, E sevens, which are the, the most elliptical looking, um, and, and it further divides. You, you'll see that in just a little bit. Irregular galaxies that they don't have an overall appearance, um, like, like the clouds in Magellan. Um, so here's two other ones. And so, so they get the, the designation IRR. So E for elliptical, S for spiral and IRR for irregular galaxies. All right, and, and th then he, found, he also found, as he was looking at spiral galaxies, that some galaxies, the spiral arms, come from a bar of, of material, not, not, a, not a single point, but a bar of material, and he labeled those barred spirals, and so they get the, the, the designation capital S, capital B, and he, you know, further, you know, classified them further with the same um, as, you know, S, B, sub A would be um, very tightly wound, and then sub D would be the loose, loosest bound. Um, it turns out that the Milky Way is, is actually a barred spiral. Um, we, we have very strong evidence of that now. Um, this is a, an S0 galaxy. Uh, he didn't really... Um, uh, Hubble didn't really know what to do with this particular galaxy. Um, he thought it was a transition between um, spirals and uh, spiral galaxies and elliptical galaxies. Um, and it, it turns out that that's not true. Um, they're kind of their own little thing. Uh, here. So, and this is, uh, of course, I'm, I'll talk about this more in the next uh, video because I'm almost out of time here, but this is the famous tuning fork diagram where you have ellipticals, 
sp spirals, um, in barred spirals down here, and then irregular 